on the 23rd day of October, Halloween gave to me 23 shadows creeping, 22 Egyptian eyeballs, 21 acid raves, 20 creepy stalkers, 19 Kiernan's time traveling, 18 zombies swatting, 17 Kekner screeching, 16 flying engines, 15 workplace accidents, 14 logs of bouncing, 13 planes exploding, 12 zombie soldiers, 11 angels wrestling, 10 ghostly hitchhikers, 9 basement clowns, 8 vampire cruises, 7 silent heroes, 6 prequel bloodstones, 5 diabolical fledglings, 4 vampire pianists, 3 dead professors, 2 Michelle actresses, and a radu drooling something bloody. Hey everyone, welcome back to the 31 Days of Halloween. Uh, can you believe we are already on uh, October 23rd? That doesn't feel like a thing that ought to have happened yet. But here we are, and, uh, and happy Monday. I hope it's a great one. We are going to talk today about a movie I had not seen before, but one that I was kind of interested in seeing because I'd heard enough good things, even though I had low expectations for it, that I was exceedingly curious to see it. And that, of course, is uh, The Boogeyman, or as it is known in this household, The Boogerman. And <laughs> it is uh, a movie directed by Rob Savage, who really shot into the spotlight on the back of uh, the movie Host, that, you know, pandemic era, you know, all in uh, one chat room kind of thing. And uh, he did that, and he did Dash Cam, which is a really interesting movie. If I, I'm still a bit torn about that. I should go back and watch that, but I'm still a little torn about that movie. But I, I enjoyed a lot of it. Um, I just, I don't know. I mean, that protagonist is just so shitty. Anyway, we're not here to talk about Dash Cam. We're here to talk about uh, his follow-up, The Booger Man. And... This is an adaptation of a very, very short story by Stephen King. Uh, the original short story, if memory serves, is just a conversation that a guy has uh, in a psychiatrist's office where he's like, hey, I didn't kill my kids. There was this thing that uh, lived in their closet, and that's what did it. And at the end of the movie, or at the end of the story, rather, uh, then, you know, something comes out of the closet and, and, you know, the suggestion is that something's going to get him and that's it. That it's a very, very quick, uh, kind of, kind of story. Uh, you know, what King himself would describe as a quick kiss in the dark. And th this follows that recent, seemingly recent trend of let's take you know, four pages and extend it into uh, a full-length movie with varying results. Uh, obviously, Pet Cemetery Bloodlines is something we talked about this 31 days, and that was a real piece of trash. <laughs> uh, but The Boogeyman is not terrible. I would go so far as to say it is merely unexceptional. Um, it's got good performers in it. There's uh, Sophie Thatcher... Uh, it plays the the lead Sadie, who's a, a teenage girl, and uh, their, their mother died. Her she has a sister named Sawyer, and uh, their mother has has died in in the not too distant uh, past. Their father is Chris Messina, a guy named Will, and he is a, a psychiatrist. Things kind of kick off when David Desmalchian from uh, the Last Voyage of the D of Demeter which is a far superior film to this, uh, but it's nice to see him pop back up on this list. Um, he ends up, uh, David Desmalchian does, it comes to uh, Chris Messina and tells him, you know, hey, I'm accused of killing my kids, but that's not what happened. And, and this is where we get the story part of all of this. And... Uh, you know, we, we discover that he ends up uh, killing himself, seemingly, hanging himself in the closet of uh, the family home, the Harper family home, where um, the, the kids and the father live. 
And one presumes like the guilt got too much for him for, you know, what he did to uh, his kids. Um, but we as horror movie viewers know that, you know, there was there were shenanigans afoot. And um, so that, that seems to bring this booger man into the Harper household. And it's this creature that kind of li lives in the closet, uh, lurks about in the shadows. It cannot be seen in the light. Or, or it avoids the light, even though we do get uh, a, a couple of good looks at it. And um, and that's kind of the movie. Is Now there is this uh, creature that hides in the dark that, you know, Sadie Thatcher's character has to first uh, recognize as being a real thing. And then go investigate like she goes back to the the home of David Desmal Desmalchian and his wife who is fully crackers like has gone full bananas and uh she ends up like kind of using um the Sadie Harper uh or yeah Sadie Harper is her character's name uh Sadie Harper Sophie Thatcher gets mixed up in my brain because I'm old and confused. But yeah, uh, uses her as bait a little bit. The mom is played by Marin Ireland, David Asmachian's wife, who you might know from Hell or High Water, I guess, but recently she was in Justified City Primeval, and that's kind of where I know her from. And, uh, and she's quite good in that, and she's good in this. Uh, it's not a giant part, but, you know, as playing the, the wife who has gone around the bend, thanks to, uh, you know, her husband and children all being dead now. Although her housekeeping, let's be honest, uh, has suffered as a result of this. Uh, her house is filled with disgusting food, left out everywhere. It, you know, like... I understand the depression and that she has become single-minded in this need to, I, I've got to destroy this thing. But also, like, you know, I'm not the cleanest person in the world. You know, sometimes I'll leave a pizza, a pizza box on the counter for, let's say, 24 hours or so. But eventually you pick that shit up just because it's in the way of other stuff you need. Like, she's still got to eat and shit and all the things a human being has to do to survive. Like, you've got to move that stuff around a little bit. Uh, and, and I don't, anyway, this is, it's one of those things that in a horror movie, I'm like, so how is she just surviving day to day then? Also, is she just getting money from life insurance? Is that how she is surviving? Cause she's clearly not going to work anymore. Or maybe we're just like pre foreclosure or something. I don't know. There's a lot of stuff going on. And I don't have a lot of great answers to, um, anyway, so all of that is going on. And, and uh, so the emotional core of the movie is this is a family, the Harper family is fractured by the, the loss of the mother and they're trying to find ways to come together and move forward, like be a family again. And in the meantime, you know, there's this monster that could be trying to kill Sawyer, the youngest uh, child, as well as Sophie Thatcher. Um, and, uh, and, and that's kind of the movie. And it's a... It's a creature feature for sure. It's got a pretty good emotional core. All the performances are, are pretty solid. Um, you know, shout out to Madison Hugh, who is uh, Bethany. It's one of uh, Sophie Thatcher's friends who, like, some of her friends are real shitty about the fact that her mother died and seem to be, like, there. there's a scene where they, uh, all the kids get a little high and end up, um you know, playing a game which ends up with the booger man, uh, you know, scaring the shit out of Sophie Thatcher and she freaks out and stuff. And, uh, but Madison Hugh is, uh, the one friend that kind of sticks with her and is a pretty good character. Like it's an interesting character that she's sort of caught between the, the social group and her friend, Sophie Thatcher. And, there's some interesting stuff there. Like all of this is kind of just good enough. And it, it's a real bummer when you're watching this movie that the whole thing feels very routine. Uh, like Rob Savage is a, a good director. And so all the monster stuff is staged fairly well. It's very predictable. 
there's just nothing surprising about this movie. I mean, it, it is... Uh, we talked about Totally Killer being um, a, a completely um, adequate viewing experience. And and on the Discord, we talked about a little more of like... The, totally Killer is a perfect three-star movie, you know? And I think The Boogerman falls into that category of this is a perfectly fine movie. There's nothing about it that's bad. There are some good performances. There aren't any scares that are going to, you know, knock you back on your heels. Uh, there's nothing about it that's terribly memorable. Um, other than, I think, David Desmouch in, um, like, seeing his performances in this movie and then in uh, Last Voyage of the Demeter it gave me such an appreciation just for him as an actor of like, oh, these are two wildly different roles one is very withdrawn and and uh in the booger man he is, is like so depressed and closed off and and wounded and last voyage of the demeter he's a lot more boisterous like he's just a good actor and and i want to see him in everything now um much like when we talked about uh, uh all of the house of usher stuff like i want to see a movie with like him and Mark Ham, really just the entire cast of House of Usher. Like, let's bring David Desmalich in into the Mike flanagan universe, so that I can have all my favorite actors and uh, actresses just working with him now. Um, you know, like, let's get Kate Blanchett in there. Uh, you know, I, my laundry list of people that I think are underrated or are just, you know, at the top of their game. Let's bring back the ghost of Philip Seymour Hoffman into a Mike Flanagan film. Um, anyway, I'm just, you know, spitballing about the seances I want to conduct now and not talking about the booger man. Yeah, and, and I, I guess at the end of the day, that's the problem with it, right? Is that it's fine. Uh, the booger man is a fine movie. If you see the booger man, you're probably going to, you know, be entertained enough but it's just completely unexceptional. And I think as a result of being completely unexceptional, I, I kind of don't recommend it because they're just better creature features. There are better versions of this kind of story. Um, good enough isn't good enough all the time. And where Totally Killer, I think, has enough going for it that I would recommend it with sort of a yeah it, it's it, like it's a good 90 minute watch uh the booger man i think is just there's just not enough there there for it to be a, a real recommend i think it's okay uh but that's just not good enough these days for this kind of horror film particularly in a year where you've got you know movies like demeter and movies like talk to me and you know, like there's kind of a laundry list of, or even Influencer. We talked about that recently. And Influencer, while not, you know, the most mind-blowing movie you've ever seen, has such a good performance at the middle of it that it's kind of undeniable that you should see Influencer if, if for no other reason than Cassandra Node. Uh, whereas this just doesn't have anything like that. Like Desmalchian just isn't in the movie enough for him to carry the film. Like, he's only in it for five minutes. Um, if he were all through it, maybe we got something. But, yeah, 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 yeah. It's just, uh, just a bummer. Like, why can't Mark Hamill just show up as the fixer from House of Usher in this movie to be like, look, uh, I hear you got a booger man. Um, I know a few things about boogermans. I'll take care of this little problem for you. Uh, <laughs> that's my impression of Mark Hamill in House of Usher. You're welcome world um yeah so yeah, i'll tell you what let's just leave it there i don't want to go on and on about how this is kind of a mediocre movie and mediocre just isn't good enough in a year that has too many other good movies uh, for you to spend your time on so uh, a little bit of a, a down note a little bit of a bummer this time around but i will say coming up uh we've got another uh, and our last uh series of movies we got a, a trilogy ahead of us and uh, we'll kick that off tomorrow. So uh, be sure you're enjoying these uh, last days of Halloween. It's hard to believe that there's only another week or so left in October. But I hope you're enjoying it. I hope you're uh, just, uh, you know, doing uh, all the spooky things that make you happy. I know I am trying to do that very thing. 
I'm really enjoying watching all these movies. Even when the, the Booger Man isn't the most exciting film, I'm still having a good time uh, watching all these scary movies. I love it. Uh, so be spooky out there. Enjoy yourselves. And I will see you tomorrow for another episode of the 31 Days of Halloween. See you then. Oh,